Hi everyone, this is Jennifer. You're listening to Moving Your Future, the podcast that tells you all about the innovations shaking up mobility. Today I'm here with Clément Nouvelle, Valio LiDAR Technical Director, to talk about autonomous mobility and LiDAR, the very high-tech sensor that makes vehicle autonomy possible. Hi, Clément. Hi, Jennifer. Great to be here. Great to be here with you. So, Clément, my first question, is autonomous mobility really going to happen? And if so, when exactly? Sure. Autonomous mobility is definitely on its way. It's already a reality actually today, and it will make its way further center stage in the years to come in the automotive industry and elsewhere. 2021, last year, was in fact a turning point for this in terms both of the regulatory landscape and the technology. On January 22, last year, a new United Nations regulation approved the commercialization of vehicles capable of reaching level 3 automation at a maximum speed of 60 km per hour. Many countries have since defined the conditions to approve level 3 automated driving, including Japan, Germany, the UK and France. And in terms of technology, 2021 saw the first two cars capable of reaching level 3 automation enter the market, mm -hmm. the Honda Legend AD and the Mercedes S-Class. Mm -hmm. These two cars have one thing in common. They are both equipped with Valeo LiDAR, the sensor which is essential for autonomous mobility. Without a LiDAR, in fact, reaching level 3 automation in line with the regulatory and safety requirement is simply not possible. Okay. Just to clarify for non-experts like myself, what actually is level 3 automation? A level 3 automation system allows you to delegate the driving task to your car and actually stop watching the road to do something else, like replying to your emails, watch a video, read a book, etc. Wow. And all this in perfectly safe conditions. Mm -hmm. The car drives on its own until it needs you to take control back. When this happens, the car notifies you in advance so that you can handle the driving when you are ready smoothly. And it gives you like 10 to 15 seconds to do so. Hmm. This system is called level three or conditionally automated driving, referring to this smooth handover process. Mm -hmm. And I want to underpin the revolution that this is uh, for the automotive industry. During level three operation, you are not driving your car anymore but instead you're being driven by the vehicle and the car manufacturer is fully in charge. <laughs> you can relax and use the time as you want. This is what car manufacturers call giving back time to their customers. Wow. <laughs> it really does sound pretty amazing, I have to say. Um, but now we understand the goal of wanting to give the driver time to do other things, as you explained. But how can we be actually sure that autonomous cars are fully safe? Yes, that's precisely the point. The cars are becoming autonomous primarily to make the road safer, not the other way around. That's why all cars will soon be equipped with automatic emergency braking, assisted lane keeping and automatic speed adaptation features. Mm -hmm. Do you know that more than 90% of road accidents are actually caused by human errors? Hmm. Looking at the most usual causes of accidents, an autonomous vehicle brings invaluable benefits. It never gets tired or distracted. Hmm. It never looks at your smartphone uh, uh, and, and while driving, uh, and it doesn't drive drunk. Hmm. Well, in a nutshell, it acts in a predictable way, which is what you need, what we need to reach our common goal of making the roads perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. If you think back to when ABS first emerged, a lot of questions and concerns were raised, and rightfully so. <coughs> Today, this technology is beyond question, and everybody agrees that it helps tremendously to, to improve road safety. And the same will go for driving assistance or ADAS and vehicle automation systems eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Now, you said that level three autonomy could not be achieved without LiDAR. But how does this actually, like, how does the sensor work in concrete terms? And why is it so essential for autonomous mobility? Well, first of all, uh, let me uh, explain that this sensor is a real feat in technology. Mm -hmm. LiDAR stands for light detection and ranging, a little bit like radar is radio detection and ranging. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it uses light to scan the surrounding, to send laser beams and get the, 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 back, uh, the, the, the light coming back from bouncing on objects, on obstacles, so that the, the, the car and the sensor is building a kind of 3D map of the surroundings. Fascinating. And this, it does it 25 frames per second, which represents millions of points. Hmm. What makes it so special and, and, and that it can see far, and it, what makes it so special is that it can see very far ahead at all times even on pitch black night or when you have the sun right in front of you, blinding you or deep into the fog. In all these conditions, our latest generation LiDAR can see other vehicles, pedestrians, road surface, sidewalks, uh, trees, all these things and all beyond 200 meters ahead, which mm -hmm. simply you would not be able to do with your, with our own eyes. And, totally. and a camera can, can, could not be doing the same as well. Makes sense. On top of that, we are bringing algorithms that will predict the tra trajectory of nearby vehicles. Even when they leave the line of sight, it would anticipate their movements and trigger the necessary safety maneuvers. It will therefore protect the passengers as well as anyone else in the vicinity, which mm -hmm. means not only the passengers of the car, but as well the people around pedestrians, cyclists and other road users. Yeah. And a car equipped with our latest generation LiDAR will even be able to warn other vehicles of hazards, such as the tire that has fallen on the highway, so that the other cars can know about it and act accordingly. Without these unique features pro properties, Without these unique detection properties, handling over the driving task to the vehicle in safe condition would simply not be possible. Mm. That's why we claim that LiDAR will not only significantly improve road safety, but also at the same time, pave the way, pave the way for autonomous vehicles. It does sound really fascinating. Um, what expertise would you say does a group like Valeo have in LiDAR today? Well, in fact, Valeo was the first to introduce and to series produce a LiDAR that meets the automotive standards. And you cannot provide such a sensor in a car without complying with a lot of very stringent standards. And that was back in 2017. Today, the picture is very simple. 99% of the cars that are equipped with LiDARs are equipped with actually Valeo LiDARs. Mm -hmm. Our LiDAR equips the first two cars in the world to achieve level 3 automation. And we have produced more than 170,000 of them to date. And wow. this is coming from our plant in Vemding in Bavaria, mm -hmm. which is absolutely unique as it's the only plant in the world to manufacture in series automotive grade lighthouse. That's requiring cutting edge skills in microelectronics, in optics, in photonics, as well as in validation, which is not, not a minor part, in fact, in producing lighthouse. So we have a real technological and industrial leadership in this field. It's super impressive, I have to say. Um, how did Valeo achieve all of this then? <laughs> yeah, that's going back to our DNA in driving assistance. It's the result of 30 years of experience in driving assistance. And, and today it makes Valeo the, the world leader in this area. To give you just an idea, we equip one out of every three new cars with our driving assistance technologies. Mm -hmm. And the same way that humans are using their eyes or ears uh, to move, well, we give the cars the ability to see and hear. That's the sensors that we are producing that, in fact, are the ears and the eyes mm -hmm. of the cars. And we've been pioneering the, in this field when we invented the first ultrasonic sensor uh, for the parking assistance. Uh, in, that, uh, in that case, it was in the early 90s. Uh, and that was the backup beeper that we've all come to know today. Mm -hmm. And since then, we have developed the most comprehensive portfolio of sensors in the automotive industry, which includes front cameras, satellite cameras, radars, lidars, as well as the computing brain, you know, the, the, the place where all these signals are actually processed, computed so that the car can know where to drive and how to drive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so this rollout of driving assistance sensors is today accelerating. That's what we see. In three years from now, 75% of all new cars will be equipped with these advanced features. Wow. So that's becoming a big reality for all of us. It mm. gives you an idea of how the pace have picked up. And, and, and just a few numbers on that. We've produced 1.5 billion sensors in the last 30 years, which is already a big value, but we'll produce just as many in the next five years. Right. 
Well, I must admit, I can't wait to try all of this when it's going to be on the market. Um, I'd love to also know, how would you say will autonomous mobility evolve in the coming years? And also, what are Valio's ambitions? Yeah, that's exactly our, our roadmap, our strategy in, in, in realizing that the autom autonomous mobility journey is in fact just starting now. A few years ago, it was like science fiction, and today it is a safe and tangible reality. Hmm. The first autonomous cars are already on the road. As I said, we're talking about the Honda or Mercedes-Benz uh, S-Class. In some cars, as we said, we can already delegate driving to the vehicle in certain situations, such as when parking, in traffic jams, and very soon on the highway, and it's absolutely safe. But autonomous mobility goes far beyond that, far mm -hmm. beyond passenger cars. It's also extending to shuttles, robot taxis, fully driverless robot taxi service actually already exists in Phoenix in the United States, for example. Mm -hmm. And these are hundreds of robot taxis which are in public operation uh, and operated by Waymo, which is one of Valio's uh, customers. And Waymo right. is one uh, branch of, of Google, as mm -hmm. uh, you may know. So, okay. Autonomous mobility is already happening. It's happening in passenger cars, in robot taxis, in shuttles, as well as in autonomous trucks very soon. But it will also cover some other areas, such as industrial, agricultural vehicles. We are, in fact, equipping some harvesters with our lidars. Wow. And it's, uh, it is set to become automated very quickly for these areas, but, but some other areas, like, for example, in Australia, in the mining industry, Uh, we foresee that the machinery should become fully autonomous by 2030. Uh, so that's what we are seeing uh, in these areas, but on top there are other, other applications like delivery droids. Mm -hmm. You may know that these uh, droids and this uh, automated transportation of goods, not of people, uh, that's uh, been uh, picking up very fast uh, during the pandemic. Yeah. And, and that's uh, set to vastly expand in our cities in the next few years. Okay. So all these operated by LiDAR. LiDAR is the key enabler for all these kind of autonomous mobility uh, services. And in the automotive industry alone, the LiDAR market we foresee will increase fivefold between 2025 and 2030, which is expected right. to reach around $50 uh, billion dollars market. Right. Wow. And we are very confident that our latest generation LiDAR, which is an advanced stage of development today, will combine the right performance, the right pricing as well, the right range, resolution, frame rate per second, which will be a key contributor for contributing to this acceleration of autonomous mobility. Wow. Really amazing. So interesting. Thank you so much, Clément. That's it for today. You've been listening to Moving Your Future, the podcast that sheds light on the mobility of tomorrow. Find us on Valio.com, Deezer and Spotify. Tune in for more soon.